XXXF. This is Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Uh, we're talking safety this this morning. You know, as we wrap up May, May is National Water Safety Month. And with Memorial Day weekend, it is the unofficial start of summer, which means a lot of pools are opening. As you know, the Houston uh, summer pools are open. They just released their schedule. And I have on the phone line with me, Miss Lindy Mundick, who is the Senior Manager of Aquatics at YUSA, uh, the local YMCA and uh, other uh, air, uh, YMCAs across the country and in the Houston area are having aquatic programming. So good morning, Lindsay. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. Um, first, let's talk about May being National Water Safety Month. Tell us why uh, the Y is working to educate children and parents uh, on the importance of water safety. Uh, drowning poses a, a, a serious threat to the health and well-being of people nationwide, and, and specifically uh, to children and minority populations. It is a leading cause of death for children one to four years old, and the second leading cause of death for children five to fourteen. Uh, you know, teaching children how to swim and be safer on water is is one of the most important skills. Uh, parents can help their children learn because it's not only about recreation and and building confidence, but it also saves lives. Yes, indeed. So um, h- how long have you, uh, well, I know you've been in this field for uh, over 20 years. You've been with the Y for 20 years? Absolutely. Absolutely. I started my Y career uh, actually in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So. Oh, nice. And <laughs> and, uh, and, and was it your you know, passion to help people or, you know, teach them how to swim? What what was it about the YMCA that made you want to work for them? Uh, you know, I think uh, it, 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 the Y is more than just a, a gym or a, a place to learn to swim. It, uh-huh. It's a place that really fosters community, social responsibility, healthy living, living and, and youth development. Uh, and so the Y is, is an organization that's really meant and, and built to give back to the community. Indeed. You're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Lindsay Mundick, who is the Senior Manager of Aquatics at YUSA. So um, early, you mentioned her, uh, earlier, you mentioned about uh, minorities mm-hmm. um, being the most in, in the drowning rates. Can you tell us what um, the racial disparities in the drowning rates are? Yeah, uh, you know, so there... It, there are, according to a research study uh, uh, by the, done by the USA Swimming Foundation and in, in University of Memphis and, and University of Nevada, Las Vegas, uh, the swimmability uh, in, in many minority communities does not match that of their Caucasian counterparts. Uh, so in African-American children, for instance, for, uh, 40% or I'm sorry, 60% uh, and, and 45% of Hispanic children can't swim compared to about 40% of Caucasian swim, uh, children. Um, so there are you know, lots of reasons uh, for why African-American and Hispanic um, uh, children might not uh, swim. One, they might not have access to swimming lessons and or uh, the water in general. Um, and, and obviously there might be a family history or lack of uh, general lack of knowledge about the importance of water safety. Um, and that's why we feel really the why is, is crucial uh, as a community resource to make an impact uh, in drowning prevention. So, so to underscore uh, your point about you know, um, African-Americans and Hispanics you know, mm-hmm. not knowing how uh, to swim so they can't teach their kids um, because they probably can't afford the swimming lessons. What can we do about that? What, what do you think the solution might be? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the Y is hoping to be part of that solution. Uh, We really hope, uh, and we know that we're in a unique position to help bridge the gap in delivery of swimming lessons and water safety education, especially to underserved uh, communities. Uh, This year, the Y is awarding more than 33,000 scholarships for free water safety lessons across the country uh, to kids who otherwise wouldn't have access to swimming lessons as a part of our Safety Around Water program. Uh, And I do know uh, the local Y there in Houston is is, is definitely participating in the Safety Around Water programming um, and, and will have uh, scholarships and financial assistance available for swimming lessons in Safety Around Water. Now, is, is this for both children and adults? 
Well, the main focus of, of the, the scholarships that I mentioned is really targeted to youth 4 to 14 years old, obviously, because that's the, the target population in terms of um, leading causes of death. Sure. Um, but the program, you know, and swimming lessons can be learned at any age. Uh, just because, uh, you know, somebody's over the age of 18 doesn't mean that uh, it's it's too late to learn how to swim. Uh, so we have adult programming available uh, for, for people in our wives uh, to come to and, and learn how to swim as well. Oh, nice. You listen to Access Houston. We're talking to Lindsay Mundick, who is the senior manager at Aquatics at the Y, uh, YUSA. They are having uh, offering scholarships uh, to, to teach our kids how to swim. Very important uh, life skill uh, to know. Uh, with the summer coming up, I mean, this is the start of summer this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, what are some of the pointers that kids can remember if they find themselves and water unexpectedly. Yeah, so our uh, Safety Around Water program uh, really teaches children some of those fundamental water safety skills. Uh, so, you know, everything from reach and throw, don't go if, if somebody is in trouble and, and you need to help them, uh, CPR, uh, as well as what to look for in a safe place to swim. Uh, to answer your question, two of the skills that we teach in this program, which really um, works towards helping a child self-rescue, uh, would be jump, push, turn, and grab. So the idea that if a child were to fall into the water, that they can get themselves to the, su the surface, uh, turn towards safety or turn towards the wall and grab the side of the pool or make their way towards, you know, the, the side of a, uh, a lake, uh, for instance. Uh, the second skill that we really hope to teach uh, in this program is swim, float, swim. And uh, what we do there is we work with children to learn how to swim a short distance on their front. When they get tired, roll onto their back uh, for resting and, and catching their breath, and then roll back onto their front and continue swimming to safety. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, those, those two skills together really to give, give kids and, and adults the confidence to be able to uh, get themselves out of trouble if, if they encounter it. And that, those are some great pointers as you were explaining of them. Um imagining it in my head and i'm like yeah that makes sense okay yeah. so a, a lot of times uh, you know a lot of folks don't know how to swim because of some traumatic experience in water in the pool where they you know almost drown and right. uh post-traumatic stress disorder is very real and so for some people when they you know get in water that is too deep or over their head they may you know fall into a state of panic and mm -hmm. and a lot of people are afraid of water so how can you teach someone who is afraid of water you know how to swim well i think it's important to understand uh, and for, you know, either the parent to advocate for their child having a, a near droning experience or um, an adult who is learning to swim to really have that conversation with the instructor uh, so the instructor can understand kind of uh, the emotional uh, side of, of where their learning needs to come from, right? Um, because you know, understanding how to, be, how to swim and be safe around water uh, and teaching submersion and breath control would be the first step uh, in working with many people uh, when they have a fear of water. Um, and, and obviously water safety lessons and, and teaching front float and back float and, and building that sense of control uh, becomes really important when you're working with people who have a, a fear. Indeed. You're listening to Access Houston, talking to Lindsay Mundick uh, with the uh, Aquatics Division at YUSA. So with the uh, program that is being offered uh, this summer by the YMCA, where can families get uh, the free swimming lessons and, and how do they qualify? Yeah, so those uh, those scholarships and in, in water uh, safety around water and water safety lessons um, are are again part of that safety around water program. Those interested should visit uh, their local YMCA uh, in Houston for more information, uh, and or check uh, the the Houston Wise website. Okay, we will do that. Uh, but what anything else that we need to know that's going on uh, with the YMCA? Uh, you, you know, I think uh, just come on in and learn about the youth programming that we have going on uh, to keep kids busy yeah. uh, this summer. Uh, lots of lots of summer programming, as well as obviously swimming lessons uh, available for for youth in the community. Indeed, Miss Lindsay Mundick, the senior manager of aquatics at YUSA, uh, check go to your local Houston YMCA to uh, find out 
about the uh, safety water program that they are offering uh, this summer at the YMCA. Lindsay, thank you so much for uh, calling in and uh, talking to the great people of Houston, Texas. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Uh, welcoming a first time on the program, uh, one in studio and one on the phone. She is a radio personality with Rima Gospel Radio, the lovely uh, Latori Williams. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And calling uh, all the way from somewhere, making major moves, money moves. Uh, he's an executive and best selling author, Mr. Steve Pemberton. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. So, uh, well, first, uh, Tori, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself real quick. Okay, so I am Tori Williams. A lot of people know me um, by Tori J. I am one of the hosts on Mass Media, which stands for Making a Statement. And you can hear us on 101.5 FM Rama Gospel Radio. All right. And Mr. Pemberton. So I am the chief human resource officer for a company called Global Force. Uh, and uh, we're focused on bringing positive social recognition to the workplace and the world. Indeed. And prior to that, I was the uh, global chief diversity officer for Walgreens. Nice. So with uh, May being Foster Care Awareness Month, um, I understand, uh, Mr. Pemberton, that you are uh, a product of being in that system. And uh, with that experience, uh, you persevered and you became the man that you are today. And now that you you, you even have a movie that has uh, something to, to do with that called A Chance in the World, The Man, The Book, uh, The Movement. So uh, first, can you uh, just um, tell us your story? Yeah, the title, the title is the story, A Chance in the World. I actually uh, got that diary, I, I got that title from the diary entry of a babysitter. Uh, he met me at one and a half years old. I was then uh, in the care of my mother, who was in the middle of a losing battle with alcoholism, estranged from her own family, and locked in this long battle with the uh, Department of Social Services. Um, and this one particular day, a uh, babysitter comes to pick me up and I don't want to leave my mother because even by that age, I know that, you know, sometimes she uh, returns and sometimes she doesn't. And he sees how desperate this is. And he says in his diary, this little boy doesn't have a chance in the world. Uh, and I didn't read that until many, many years later, but I did smile when I saw it because I thought, well, that's exactly what I, what I was looking for, a chance in the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and uh, uh -huh, go ahead. Uh, so about a year after that, I was taken from her, uh, mm. and I never saw her again. And so I've been off into foster care. I go, and, and we should point out there, there are really many, many wonderful foster families, um, who open their homes and their hearts. But unfortunately that was not my experience. And it's not an experience for, uh, far too many in foster care today. And so uh, I went through a number of placements, very turbulent, difficult experiences, you know, deeply dysfunctional family took, took me in for money. I knew it and felt it. And I lived there for over 11 years. Mm. So every day was a battle, you know, it was a battle just, just to, you know, to be safe, to, uh, to eat, to learn, um, you know, what motivated them. I, even to this day, I can't tell you. I just knew they were somebody that I had to defeat. Mm. You're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Steve Pemberton, executive and best-selling author, uh, whose movie is premiering this Wednesday called A Chance in the World, The Man, The Book, uh, The Movement. Also joining me is uh, Latori Williams uh, from Rima Gospel Radio. Um, how did you get involved uh, with this project, Tori? Well, I know one of the members of the team that was able to contact me and let me know what the story was about. And I said, well, let me take a look at the trailer. And after looking at the trailer, I just fell in love with the movement because as an educator, I'm also an educator. I oversee 28 schools in one of the largest school districts in Texas. And I knew that I had kids that I see every day 
but I never thought about them being foster kids, although there are tons of kids in our school district. So I fell in love with the trailer and the idea of me being unaware of what's taking place, it just made me want to research and do more. So I knew if I was a part of this team, it will force me to dig a little deeper. Mm. Yeah. And so um, this seems like to be, um, seems to be a recurring theme when it comes to uh, children in foster care who end up being abused. And, and, and Mr. Pemberton, to your point, you know, uh, there are some great foster families out there uh but it it always seems that we hear about the bad ones and they end up doing you know horrible things that scars uh people's lives uh and and they're just kids and they're just kids that's so true but what i like um about this story is that um mr pemberton he did not let this define him and so what i want to ask him is um after giving us such a wonderful overview of the past who is Mr. Steve Pemberton today? Well, more than anything else, I, I'm a husband and a father. Um, I've been married uh, to my wife, Tanya, for the last uh, 21, 20 years, soon to be 21 uh, next month. And I am the proud and doting father of Quinn, Vaughn, and Kennedy. So everything for me flows from uh, being a husband and, and a father. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my my career, my professional career, has always been focused in mission-centered work. So whether I worked in higher education or in advancing people's careers or health and wellness or now uh, in positive social recognition, I was always connected to these broader themes that that unite us. Uh, and then, um, you know, after the book was published, um, my wife and I created our own nonprofit, and it's largely because. Uh, Smooth, as you you just pointed out, the number of stories that came to me after the book was published, and I have to tell you, I was not anticipating that. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, I wrote the book because my son, my older boy, when he was was asking me where my parents were, and so I wound up just writing a book about it, and I did not realize that I was writing um, chapters of other people's lives, and, and many of those chapters were still open because they had not yet healed uh, from the things that they had lost. And these are, are, are people who are well, well into their adult lives, who are still walking through the world with a certain kind of pain. Uh, and, um, you know, the book, in the way in which I wrote it, to Harry's point, you know, it was a story about triumph, not a story about tragedy. Um, and it provided that pathway to healing, which, you know, for me was maybe the point of it all, right? That's why we endure what we do. Uh, it's why we take on the challenges that we do, not really for us, you know, they're, they're absolutely for others. And I learned that, you know, firsthand and I hear their stories every day. And, and I mean, every day, it's, it's not a day passes that somebody doesn't write to me from some part of the world and says, thank you. Uh, I, I can come to terms now with what I lost or now I know what I have to do mm-hmm. in support of others. Yeah. Um, the book is available everywhere. People can, uh, you know, get the book off Amazon or, you know, walk into a Barnes and Noble and, and, and pick it up and give it a go. You absolutely can. You can find it at, at uh, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Um, there's also an audio version of it available. I did the audio version and it's me do, who did the audio version. Uh, but one of the things that we're doing and actually that we're most proud of uh, relative to uh, the movie is that it's not just about going to a movie, uh, that we wanted to create an experience that would impact the community and impact foster care. So we're working um, with nonprofits and agencies all across America, including those in the Houston area, and we're donating books and tickets uh, so that young people can see what's possible. That's, that's fundamentally what this is a story about, this kind of universal story of family and faith and fortitude and forgiveness. I, I didn't see a movie. I didn't sit in a movie theater until I was 17. Uh, and, you know, the, so this idea that on this, on this one night, uh, on Wednesday, May 30th, that young people are going to be sitting in a theater, and some of them, in all honesty, for the first time, and they're going to get to see a chapter of their life, 
uh, unfold on the screen. They're going to see if they can get to be the hero of their story, that all is not lost, that they are not to be overlooked, that they do have a chance in the world. Uh, that, that to me was far more important than, uh, than anything else. And that's unfolding. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, folks across America are starting to sprinkle just a little bit of that Black Panther dust on this. Yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, because it's universal, you know, because, because it, people are experiencing this. I mean, you, you have, uh, it's, it, it just saddens the heart to know that hundreds of foster children are dying in America today. Um, and it's because we're overlooking the issue. Yeah. Um, and you know, so we, we have to do a little bit more than hope. We have to act. You yeah. know, we have to do what the ancestors did. They didn't hope. They, you know, they... They took they action acted, they and, 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 and made some things happen as well. Mr. Pemberton, I mean, you are one of the uh, agents of change who are on the front line and, and want to bring awareness to the things that are going on, and we greatly appreciate that. The movie a chance in the world the man the book the movement and the book is also available now but the movie is out this wednesday may 30th uh in 800 movie theaters across across the globe um man sir thank you so much for your time uh and and tori thank you for coming on as well we i really appreciate it absolutely thanks for having me no problem thank you so much And thank you for listening to Access Houston. We'll be back with more Access Houston on 97.9 The Box.